Good morning, and welcome to the latest uh, edition of the Shooting Straight series by me, Voice of the Forge. Thank you once again for joining me, and uh, I know it's been a while since my last um, talk, uh, but that's because there's been a, quite a few things happening. Um, some things are good, uh, some things are not so good, and there's also been an awful lot of distraction with things like E3 2015, uh, the Xbox uh, decisions, the Sony decisions, what Nintendo um, are, are doing with regards to their systems, uh, but there's also been a lot of things happening um, in the UK which have distracted me, and I've thought long and hard about what it was that I was actually going to talk about. Now, I also have an idea for a couple of other uh, topics, uh, one of which would take place once I've got my computer upgraded and I can uh, use the actual capture card that I have to its fullest advantage, uh, which means that I'll then be able to start doing uh, gameplay uh, footage, and uh, whilst I'm doing those, I'll also be able to uh, concentrate a bit more on uh, discussions of uh, the games, uh, some of the some some games history, um, and 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 various bits and pieces. Now, one of the uh, other things that I'm looking to do is the confessions of a gamer series. Uh, now, the last time I did a um, shooting straight, um, it was a confession about the Wolf Among Us, and about how I found the game to play, even though it didn't really follow the traditional game format, and it was. Uh, very much a light um, point-and-click adventure, which I happen to love, because I loved the Monkey Island series, but there wasn't a huge amount of playability within the show, but I still really loved the um, storyline. Um, however, the overriding thing that uh, has come to the fore uh, for me in the last day or so has been this whole notion of women and gaming, as if they are somehow antithetical or somehow separate and have to be treated differently. And um, it ties in with some of the things that have been happening in E3, uh, mainly from the uh, anti-Gamergate side, like um, Sarkeesian, um, who has called people out in the past for surreptitiously taking photographs in public spaces, and then she herself goes on to do exactly the same thing, and is being a total hypocrite about it all. Um, and the reactions to games, like uh, Fallout 4, um, with regards to um, Doom is a huge issue. Now again, um, I, had, I did a video in the not too distant past uh, whereby we were looking at manufactured outrage and how it can be used to control a narrative to actually bolster the sales of a game. Uh, you don't have to go far back to in the history of uh, video games uh, to find the original Grand Theft Auto and Carmageddon games, which were getting absolutely slated uh, for the violent narrative that they had um, for the uh, effectively violence for the sake of violence and won't someone think of the children brigade got behind including Jack Thompson who after his long battle to try and get video games banned for causing real life violence got disbarred yet we are now seeing the exact same arguments being used by people who are in a position uh, where they have a, a megaphone in effect um, to disproportionately represent themselves uh, as regards to everybody else. Uh, if you were to look at the majority of people who enjoy and play games, we have virtually no media exposure. And I include myself in this. I do not have a large um, YouTube following. I do not speak for many people other than myself. There are people who will agree with me in the gaming group that I help run. There are others that would disagree with me. But that isn't the point. What the point is, is that all of us together, in some way, shape or form, have the ability to be able to speak out. Now, uh, whether or not we speak out, and whether or not our voices are heard, uh, is a massive issue when you've got tens of thousands of people all saying roughly the same sort of thing or behaving in the same sort of way it's very difficult to stand out from the crowd 
But when you have um, an agenda that you can push, uh, and even though you are very much a very vocal minority, and you make up a vanishingly small amount of the percentage of people who are either involved in the game industry or who enjoy games, then your voice, um, when you've got that extra boost to the volume, uh, makes it sound like you speak for many, many, many more people than would otherwise be the case. And I am using my words carefully here because there are some people that have made games that look like they've been made in RPG Maker, and I could quite easily say myself that I've made games in RPG Maker, but I wouldn't dream of putting them on Steam or elsewhere for sale because they just weren't that good. And we have these people that because they have some kind of intersectionality with intersectionality feminism, all of a sudden have these massive megaphones placed in front of them. And they then start calling a narrative which is completely at odds with most people's uh, experience of the situation. And of course, Everybody trots out that anecdotal evidence is the worst kind of evidence there is. But when we have people, as we have seen in the past, that have tried to demonise the gamer as the white, 30 plus male, living in a basement, absolutely no uh, good for society, etc, etc, ad infinitum ad nauseum, that's when we get people standing up and we end up with um, hashtags like not your shield. And I've been guilty of the past in excluding myself from uh, uh, Not Your Shield because of an ableist viewpoint. It's only recently that um, I've come to see that I could, uh, because of what I've experienced, that should I wish to, there is reason for me to use the Not Your Shield hashtag as well. Uh, but I prefer Not Your Scapegoat because I'm a more argumentative bastard than most people. Again, which is one of the reasons why I speak and I use this as a therapy form as part of the problem with my issues. But that isn't to say that I massively, massively overstate this issue. I use it to bring in uh, this uh, evidence that there are people out there that who, um, whilst they feel they belong to something bigger than themselves, don't always recognise um, the various different parts within a movement, and that they are just as much capable and just as much um, a part of the overall culture as others, even though they themselves practice a form of exclusion because they don't want to be seen to be um, taking over something which, at the first blush, um, you wouldn't identify with. And it's these hidden things that I think holds a lot of people back. And, it, and, and it's the, one of the reasons why the Forgotten Forge Games project was started, and it's why I'm still pushing it through is the fact that I have people that when they go to the more conventional game centres or the supposedly local friendly game store, which is anything but friendly unless you are great friends with the manager, it is so exclusionary it isn't funny and it's a wonder he's still in business, that you start to see that people who have issues or people that um, have um, difficulty in um, being able to slot in to some of these um, environments need just a little bit more help and understanding. And this was the, the founding principle of Forgotten Forge Games, where we looked at people who wanted to play games but didn't want the argumentative competitive atmosphere or they didn't want to feel that they'd turn up to this place and nobody would play a game with them because one, they didn't know what anyone was playing and two, nobody knew who they were and no one would take time out of their games to speak to them, to find out about them, to um, actually invite them in. Uh, to the gaming fold, and they would just feel that they'd 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 they'd, they'd gone to the club, they'd they'd gone to this place uh, where they could see people playing all these games, and they felt excluded purely because they didn't know anyone. It was that cliquish and that outside. Now, one could say that um, they have a responsibility to get out there and um, actually inject themselves into a conversation. But if you're talking with people with less than advanced social skills, um, 
it's a daunting prospect, if not something that could be seen as downright rude. And it was my contention that the the, the, the place in question, when they had the people that um, were at the front and they took the the money for the the, the hall of the, the 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 rent for the hall, is oh we haven't seen you here before. All oh, right, let me introduce you. There was none of this sort of right. You don't know anyone. This is your first or second time here. You don't know anybody, so I'll introduce you. These are the people that you want to speak to for this, or these are the people that you want to speak. And yes, I understand that takes time and that takes commitment but if you truly love the um, hobby then to my mind it's a no-brainer that if you've got someone who you know that you can um, bring into the hobby and you can and, and, and you can find out something about them uh, you can actually encourage a lot of uh, for want of a better word, uh, you can encourage a lot of excitement about a product purely for your enthusiasm in it. And this is where community comes in. It isn't the work of one person. One person can get the ball rolling. But once you've got three or four people, and it's kind of like, right, okay, I'm busy, I've got a queue of people to deal with. But if I just introduce you to this person here, this, is, this person is interested in X or Y, or if you've asked the question what are you here for, what do you enjoy oh I like card games, ok well we'll get you to speak to this person and this is his name, introduce you um, tell him what you're interested in and we'll see if we can get you fitted up and if he can't play the game that you're interested in he will know who plays what you've still got the same thing and then you can go back to the people that you can deal with in a couple of minutes because they're regulars they know what they want to do, how to do it and everything else and I find this sadly lacking in virtually every place I've been. Um, now, I've played in a few tournaments for a game called Magic the Gathering. And recently there seems to have been a uh, hoo-ha on Twitter with regards to the female representation in Magic the Gathering. Now, I, some time ago, uh, lent help to Waterstones because they were going to start looking at running a regular games night. Uh, this was kind of knocked on the head because um, the way in which they wanted to run it and uh, the staffing levels and things like that. But for the couple of weeks that it ran, it was a very interesting experience for me whereby they just opened the doors to absolutely anybody. Are you interested in whatever. There was very little guidance in terms of what people played. And on the first night we had about 30 people and I will make no bones in accepting that about six of those people were myself and five people from Forgotten Forge Games. They knew that we would be coming, they knew that we would be advertising ourselves as a games club and we were there, as we'd said, uh, to help them with the majority of games because most of the games they sold we covered. And because we could introduce people to games, we would actually be able to sort of um, act as more of a, a, a lubricant for disparate groups, because we'll talk to anybody. Um, and that's what happened. Uh, we had one particular group that decided they were going to stay in their corner because they were their group, and that's all they did. And they actually come from the main as I say, supposedly friendly local game store, they didn't interact with anybody they didn't know. They just sat in their corner and they just played with themselves. Other people who were coming in, who played Yu-Gi-Oh, who played Magic, who played X-Wing, who played... Uh, well, we actually had, they, they actually gave us a promo copy of Firefly for people to try out, so we were playing Firefly the board game. We had My Little Pony, we had all sorts. And our group was a case of, look, we've got these games, we've got these decks, what do you want to play? We'll play with absolutely anybody, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, whether you're male or female. And we, we, we had it a right rip-roaring success. We, were, we had a fantastic good we had a fantastically good games night and we met a lot of interesting people and interested people where we could say yes this person runs certain things on certain nights and we run things on different nights and the upshot of it all was the fact that uh, at the moment um, even though we are in very much reduced circumstances we are a club with approximately 45 to 50 members and of that I would say we've got a 25% male membership, which means that a quarter of our members, roughly, are women. And the reason they turn up to us is because it isn't the competitive 
oh no, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do the other, which is in one place, and it isn't the, who on earth are you, what are you doing here, oh my god, it's a girl, let's all freak out. We have a policy which is, we're friendly to everybody, and as we're, we've all, if we weren't friends before, we have all become friends over the, over the last couple of years as we've been doing this, and every time we, every time we get someone new, we, we're like a dog with two tails, where it's kind of like, excellent, we've got a new friend. And uh, as a result of this, we've had people that wouldn't necessarily um, think to come to, to, to what we do because it's a, it's a nerdy thing or whatever. But we have actually had women turn around to say, oh, we won't go to that because as soon as we turn up, it, we'll, we'll feel out of place. Oh, why would you feel out of place? Well, we'll be the only girl there. And as a result, we'll, we won't feel comfortable because everyone will be watching us. Uh, to which our reply is, no, you won't. You'll be about the fourth or fifth. Uh, because out of the 45, 50 people that we have, uh, we have a regular attendance of roughly about 12 every week. And because we have the 12, we get, conversely, two, three, sometimes one, admittedly, but sometimes four or five uh, ladies turn up to play. And they do play different games. Uh, a lot of them do play magic, but we have one person who is interested in My Little Pony, another person who is interested in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! And then we have a couple, of, uh, a couple of ladies that really enjoy beating the men on Halo. And it's one of the funniest anecdotes that we have was... Uh, again, before we set up uh, Forgotten Forge, uh, when I was running uh, basically an internet cafe style um, shop, which was specialising in games, and we had World of Warcraft on the computer, so anyone who had an account could sit down, log in and play. And there was this particular chap who um, was one of the other uh, groups, shall we say, and he comes in and finds uh, this particular lass had just logged off from World of Warcraft, so he's still got the, the splash screen as she's logging off and finish her time. And he says, oh, you play World of Warcraft, and he starts getting his strut on sort of thing, because I'm a man and I obviously know more about the game than you do, and he starts trying to chat her up, and one of the things that he says, oh, if you ever need any help in World of Warcraft, let me know. You know that condescending manner that some men have? And uh, she says, oh, no, I don't think so. And this was back in Burning Crusade as well, by the way. And it's gone, oh, no, I don't think so. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. And he goes, well, I've got this and that and the other. And she says, well, all mine are maxed out and very capable. At which point you can see his chin hit the floor. So when we have articles written about magic where people uh, seem to uh, think that uh, women can't compete or whatever, um, I find magic is a very bad example uh, for the rest of the card gaming and uh, board gaming industry uh, because the people that I find, uh, or I tend to find, they tend to cluster in groups into tribes uh, and they're very insular and very protective of this tribe and um, if, you, if, if you're not quite there there can be issues and uh, this, this gets more pronounced when you actually have a store system like Friday Night Magic where you have an individual who's in charge which is only catering to those who spend the most amount of money and because you've got the store uh, going in a certain direction you've got all the big money uh, magic players who want to compete time and time and time again uh, the, the all you get is the, 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 this fostering of almost like um, a, a regional championship style fervour every time there's an event for Magic and that does put people off and what's happened is that the people have been burnt out or put off because of the attitude of other gamers and then a couple of years down the line after they've given up all of a sudden a friend will, in passing has mentioned us and we've become involved and that's how we've picked up our members and this goes for male as well as female. Uh, it is unfortunate that we've recently had to downsize from three clubs a week to one, but uh, that's the nature of um, these things. We tend to go in cycles. We've been going for just over just over two and a bit years, and unfortunately the charity that we're working with uh, changed building, which meant that we had an issue with a lot of things. So, yeah, that's an aside. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to... Um, branch out a little bit more so that instead of uh, doing just the the games and the clubs we're actually going to start um, 
other things like uh, one of the ideas is um, to to start uh, doing more sort of temporary uh, disruptive projects which I won't go into because other people will be running those and they will be spin-offs that we're trying to work with other people but one thing that I will say is that because of our willingness to um, embrace just about anybody we actually have um, one lady member who I won't name but will recognize herself from the description uh, who is quite a talented artist and she was going through a bit of a rough patch and so it was said come down meet the guys sort of thing um, relax everyone will get on be friendly and if you just want to sit in the corner and do your own thing you'll be more than welcome to uh, but we'll see if we can get something that interests you and, and you can join in and it turned out that we've now got her hooked on painting miniatures because she is a, a creative personality and she really enjoys the creative process, uh, she's been able to take that and look at our hobby and go, you know what, I'll give that a go. And for someone that's only been painting for a couple of weeks, she's bloody marvellous. She, she knocks spots off me and I've been painting for 10 plus years. Um, there's no way that, uh, that my best painting would meet the, the standards of her worst. Uh, and we have people with these natural talents and with these natural tendencies that are hidden because they never get a chance to explore them or they don't know about the, these hobbies. And they're able to think outside the box uh, because there's another guy that we have who does wonderful, wonderful conversions of various bits and pieces. And uh, the conversions, when they're finished, can sometimes look so good. He's actually, when he's showing them off, people ask where they can buy the kit. And this is something that he's put together himself. So um, we have people within our um, community who excel at certain things, which when you think about it, they would never have even thought of, uh, but for the fact they've got an interest in, in, in certain things and they've been introduced to others. And I feel this is where we're missing out on the, the whole conversation when it comes to games, whether it be video games, whether it be board games, card games or whatever. When we look at the community, we are, as a community, we do have those which tend to be too quick to be um, the in-out group kind of people whereby they look at someone who is a potential uh, outsider and they see them as an outsider rather than as a new recruit and recruit isn't quite the right word but you know what I mean um, it's as I say the more the merrier the more people that we can get interested in something the more people we've got to play against the bigger the pool that we've got to play against the more games we get to play uh, because we've got so many more um, so, uh, so much a bigger pool for people to, to, to play against uh, so if there's five of you there's only so many times you can play before you're playing the same people over and over again whereas if you've got a pool of 30 convert you've, you've got you've got five six times the amount of people that you could that before you start to repeat players and sometimes you'll 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 fancy that you'll but you'll want to beat one particular person because you've got a little bit of a rivalry going on you know the old pokemon sort of trainer type thing and other times uh it's the fact that it's kind of like right we want to play this game right we can sit down and we can play 20 games and each time i've played i've played a different person wow this is fantastic it is unfortunate where I live that um, we, we're not able to expand uh, a huge amount because it's a very, very strange place to do business. And I've had other people tell me that it's a strange place for other reasons. But it's it's very strange. If you do not conform to the run-of-the-mill, very narrow-band kind of person, and you are in alternative in outlook for whatever reason, you do find yourself in a very small subset of people, which which tends to be vanishingly small when you then start Venn diagramming alternative lifestyles and games and music and stuff. And all of a sudden, where you should have a vibrant, large community like any normal city, you end up with about 30 or 40 people all, all sharing the same space so we we generally tend to pick up the people that have become disillusioned and disenfranchised by by the offerings that you've got because these are the people that that, 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 that run the show uh, and and we're picking up people that for whatever reason my reason is social anxiety disorder and I'm being investigated for PTSD other people are just the fact that um, they were bullied quite badly and as a result they've lost out on socialization skills we're all here to do things and to do something good um, and whilst this does 
turn into this whole uh, men and women in, 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 in games. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, black, white, polka dot, transgender or whatever. Games and music, I believe, are two languages which transcend all of that. If you've got a game and you both know the rules, you can both play against each other and have a shared experience where every other thing about you that you identify is doesn't make a blind bit of difference. And in one of the videos I've got up, in fact, I think it's the first video on our YouTube page, which is 25 benefits, invisible benefits of being a gamer, some of the things we've said is things are things like it doesn't matter whether your nails have dirt under them or got glitter on them. A royal flush is still a royal flush. The cards don't care. They don't judge whoever's holding them. They don't suddenly change because, oh no, we don't like you because we're, we, we don't like you because you're this or you're that or the other or, or for whatever reason. The game is an independent arbitrator. The rules are there and they disadvantage no one for no for, 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 for no reason they don't do anything they are completely neutral and it is down to the people playing the game by the rules which can have an enjoyable experience and pulls people together just as music pulls people together although i find music to be more passive than active whereas games tend to be active and you can really start to pull people together. Um, I've lost count of the times when I was doing crime prevention projects and you would just give a group of kids a TV and a console and yeah, initially there's a bit of a kerfuffle, one because of the excitement and two because everyone wants to get on it at the same time. But if you institute certain things, you can quite quickly get people that two minutes ago were sat on the, on, on the other side of the room and didn't want to integrate and they're che cheering each other on because you're playing Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat and they're having a great time and then and then and they're not thinking about what divides them in any way shape or form they're pulling together they they they're sharing an experience which is a bonding moment for them and it doesn't matter it's it it it's all out there and we are losing this so much because we have this group of people that are hell-bent on promoting divisiveness and division. And that's how... The, it's part of the victim and outrage culture, but it's how they make their living, is by saying, you're this, you're that, and you're the other. Forget labels. Just concentrate on what it is that we're doing. We love video games. The computers doesn't care, the video doesn't care, and if you're on the other side of a screen when you're playing on a con controller, all you see are pixels. Who's controlling those pixels does not make a damn bit of difference. And I wish that we could get more people involved in this to turn around and say, you know what, we truly are, we truly are the most representative and diverse community. And yes, we've got shitlords as teal deer would say and yes we've got our souls like total biscuit might say or or thunderfoot or whoever whoever is out there it doesn't matter at the end of the day we are playing games together and we are sharing experiences together and the more that we share experiences the less that we can dehumanize each other and the less we dehumanize each other the less there is of the us and them culture and because we can reduce the us and them culture we actually solve problems that go through to the heart of society where people try to other somebody else we become a tribe that's so diverse that we see everyone as one tribe but because we do this tacitly, because we do this quietly, because we don't have those large megaphones and control the press narrative, people don't know. People can't see it. And people don't want to know. Because it requires hard work. Suspension of disbelief because of the narrative that is being sold at the moment is completely the opposite of reality. Changing hearts and minds will take a long time. But there's only one way to do it. And that's to grind through all the trash mobs until we can take on the bosses and get our voices heard and get gaming back into what it should be. Enjoying games, enthusiasm about games and everyone that enjoys games getting together and just glorifying in our culture, our commitment to games 
and ultimately, because we're all playing together in one way, shape or form, to each other. I have now gone on for quite a bit longer than I usually do, uh, and uh, if you've made it this far, then I thank you for listening. I am, as always, Voice of the Forge. You can find me on Twitter, at Voice of the Forge, and on this YouTube channel, um, Voice of the Forge. Uh, I also have the blog site uh, back up and running. Um, occasionally I'll link the videos from the blog site as well, so uh, they can be found in a myriad of positions, and also on Facebook under the Forgotten Forge group, uh, night, um, Games Night, Games Club. Uh, section. Uh, so yes, uh, we have a, a varied, varied uh, v- viewpoint. And if you would like what we're doing, want to support us, then at the moment all we're doing is trying to grow via word of mouth to try and get more people listening, so that we can actually start saying what we say can be put into action a little bit better than we have been doing. And I believe that's also because that we all have problems and we all have lives to deal with. And it's not something that we're getting paid to do. Uh, So um, it's as and when we've got the volunteer time to do it. I thank you again for listening. And I hope I haven't bored you too much. And I hope hope that you will uh, listen again. Thank you very much. And good night.